Hi there, this is Dean Radcliffe, aka Chicago Grooves, and today we are going to look into how Tracker really works. This could be useful if you're looking to author a package that is reactive, or if you simply want to fully understand what these terms that the Meteor people throw around all the time are. So I think that the documentation is quite good on this. So for one, there's the docs at Meteor and the tracker section. But there's a link in here that refers to the Meteor manual, which is a little bit out of date, but has some very good deep dives into reactivity. And this is the inspiration for what I'm going to show you. But I've tailored this example to, uh, well, to what I think my audience wants. So please let me know how I do. What we're going to be doing is looking at a very basic Meteor example and getting deeper and then clarifying some terminology. All right. So we've seen session.get, and session.get is a reactive uh, data source. But here we're going to be using a much simpler data source called reactive var. And a note on my setup is that there's CoffeeScript on this side, JavaScript on this side, so look at either side that you want. Reactive var is much simpler than session in that it only tracks one value. So here we've declared a rv1 variable to be reactive var1. And then we have declared a tracker auto run that says get the value and then log it. So if we run this, it should be no surprise if you've worked with these tracker functions that they are run the first time initially and that gives us our reactive var and it should be no surprise that since this auto run invokes rv1.get if we do oops if we do an rv1.set to a different value then my console is a little bit slow but there we see that the console log is rerun. So like I said, if you set the reactive variable to different values, then you see logging statements occur. If you set it to the same value, no logging statements occur. Logical, right? There's no change that's been done. And then we've assigned the value that is returned by tracker auto run to a variable called RV handle. And that is useful for doing something like stopping the receipt of messages so that if we now say rv1.set some new value, we're no longer listening. Now I'm going to rerun this code so that we are indeed listening again because the rest of the example depends on it. Cool. And that's the version of this that uses a reactive var. But let's go one step deeper and not use a reactive var, but rather the thing that lives inside a reactive var, and that is a tracker.dependency. So you'll notice a similarity between the tracker dependency code. And basically, instead of calling a get of a reactive var, we just call depend on a tracker dependency. And then we call dep1.changed and we see that message being printed. Now, all of this gets a lot easier if we basically take the jargon that exists the way the Meteor Development Group documents it and we replace it with some simpler language. So auto runs, computations, dependencies, we can actually describe this stuff much, much simpler. And this is my take on the matter. So there are reactive data sources, right? They're also called dependencies. You just saw a dependency and a reactive data source. And you can think of these as publishers of changed events. Then there are the things that listen for changes. And you create those using tracker auto run, and they're also referred to in the docs as computations. And you can think of them as subscriber functions. I mean, if you look here, 
what these functions are doing is listening for changes. You can think of them as subscribers, and then you can think of the things they depend on as publishers. Okay, but the hardest piece of jargon to understand is in the Meteor docs where they talk about invalidating a computation. And wow, this one really blew my mind when I, when I saw it, and it's taken me months at least to understand that when they talk about invalidating a computation, all they are meaning is that you're causing an auto run function like one of these to run again. That's what happened when we called rv1.set. It's what happened when we called dep1.changed. All right, so after having run this code, you saw that we have a dep1 where we can call changed. And we will see that it reacts. It's a little slow on my computer. Now, um, how do we know what links dep1 to this actual function? Well, I'll show you. So dep1 has a field called dependence by ID, not define setter, dependence by ID. And it has a key in there. Now, this key may be different on your system. But on my system, it's 6. And when we look at dep1 dependence by ID, um, it's got keys that map to computations. So here, you're seeing that terminology that I mentioned, that an auto run is a computation. This auto run is the computation pointed at by this key in dep1. Now, you might not be able to say to see exactly what it is. So let's actually drill into the computation one other level by looking at its underscore func property. And we see here is the exact source code that we called. So this is a part of the mystery revealed that a dep is aware of which functions to call when it changes. Likewise, Reactive var rv1 also has a dep. We just have to go through it a little different way. It's on the dep property. It also has a dependence by ID field. And because it was run earlier, it has a lower number looking at its computation. And its func is exactly what we saw here. So we see that dependencies point to the computations that will be rerun when their change events fire. And I can fire a change event directly by saying rv1.dep.changed, and it's just as if we had set the value. So here we're getting to the heart of what it means to invalidate a computation. When we call the changed event on a dep, any computations that are in that depth's dependence by ID field, they receive an invalidate message. So in fact, I can actually call rv1 dep dependence by ID 5 invalidate, and it'll be just as if I had called the changed method on the dep. And since we assigned um, the return value uh, uh, of this tracker auto run, which is a computation, to the variable rv handle, and since in fact these are the same object, we can also achieve that result by calling rv handle dot invalidate. We are causing this computation to have to rerun. Now here's a finer point about that as well. Once a computation is marked as invalid, it doesn't matter if you mark it invalid once more. All that will happen, we're a bit laggy here, is that it will, yeah, we are really laggy. Even if you invalidate it two times or three times, and it will only be turned invalid once 
calling invalidate a, multi a second time has no effect. And so the computation that we invalidated will only rerun once. That is, of course, unless we call a method called tracker.flush, which says any invalid computations cause them to rerun and then invalidate again. So make your guess about how many times you will see the reactive var is to method uh, message printed out. There was the first time before the flush, and then the second time queuing all of that up. So with all that in mind, I think you'll be able to follow the source code of the reactive var package, maybe even the reactive dict package, and uh, we can find it in the Meteor Meteor repository under the packages directory. Reactive var is a simple wrapper around a tracker dependency. So you see in the constructor function of reactor, reactive var, we declare a new tracker dependency on getting the value within the reactive var this dot dep dot depend is called and on setting the value there's a test for equality and only if uh, the value is different see if it was the same we exited but only if the value is different did we call changed on the dep now the reactive dict source code is a little more complicated so I'll look at, I'll have you look at that as, you know, an exercise, but it has a dep for each key, but it also has a dep for uh, specific values. So you can look basically at, uh, let's see, not that, session.equals, and yeah, session.equals is a way uh, to only invalidate a computation if a variable changes to or from the value. So this is definitely a homework assignment. Dig into that. Um, it's a little more subtle than depending on any value of the key, and its source code is pretty plain to read if you've had this understanding, um, which basically comes down to this again. There are publishers of changed events that we call reactive data sources, there are subscriber functions, which are alternately called auto runs or computations. And then there is the complicated act of invalidating a computation, which really means causing it to run again and only once again, unless you have had a flush cycle in between. All right, it's the best I can do. It's complicated terminology. You might not have to deal with this directly if you're using helpers to manage the invalidation of your computations. But hopefully, uh, with the publish subscribe metaphor in mind, you won't be so confused next time. Thanks. This is Dean Radcliffe, and thanks for watching.